Tuesday talks. Um, and tonight we uh, do it in English again, uh, not because, um, yeah, my English is so splendid, but uh, because we have some uh, international guests tonight. It's also a uh, very international topic that uh, we will uh, talk about. It's the artist's income. Um, and as you all know, um, in, yeah, the, all over the globe, um, this financial topic is like the, the second most important issue for artists. The first is being an artist and uh, even more important, being recognized as an artist. But even if you, are, uh, you get that, you gain that uh, recognition, that doesn't mean that you gain money uh, for it. Um, and that's what we want to talk about. Uh, it's also the Corona crisis who, uh, that, that has highlighted that, um, of course, very painfully. Uh, yesterday, the, the pubs reopened in Belgium, uh, but still uh, politicians are still uh, yeah, thinking and discussing how they want to um, give support to uh, artists uh, that didn't get it yet. Um, we are June now. Uh, some of us uh, didn't have any money from March already. And maybe the most absurd is even that they really want to give it, but it's very difficult to uh, figure out how to give it. And that's because of an, um, yeah complex uh, situation uh, in which many of us are working. Um, it's, um, yeah a whole uh, complex of uh, statuses and combinations of these uh, statuses and that was not uh, that's not the the fault of uh, corona it uh, it was already um, a long way before uh, this crisis that uh, this situation makes it difficult uh, for many artists to um, they survive but uh, there's uh, a big issue about uh, fair pay, fair practice, um, and yeah, surviving financially in a decent way. Um, so how are we going to solve this? Um, tonight we won't uh, talk about uh, or analyze all the problems as we did already in the in the first uh, Tuesday talk uh, about the same issue, but we really want to talk about alternatives uh, tonight. Um, can we think different solutions um, to earn money as artists, but maybe also beyond uh, art? And therefore we have invited uh, again four speakers with an uh, alternative practice or the beginning of an ID uh, for uh, such an alternative. They are um, really different. Um, uh, we will present them. I will also present uh, the artists um, when they will uh, present their alternative. And after that, after these first uh, 30 seconds, we will uh, open the discussion um, to maybe talk more about uh, the basics uh, of all these alternatives. And as always, you can uh, comment and ask questions on uh, Facebook. Um, we admit that it's unpaid labor, um, but still you can do it and um, it's your free choice and we will do our best to, uh, to answer them. Um, let's get this Tuesday talk uh, started. And um, Per, if you hear me, um, I wanted to start with you. Um, per Hasselberg is a, a Swedish artist um, and he's working for Konstfremjandet in, uh, in Sweden. It's a Swedish organization for art promotion um, uh, by the principles of culture for all. Uh, that's a very important principle uh, of this organization, which uh, has a long history behind it. Um, and Per was also uh, part of an artistic research um, on the artist's salary. Um, in Swedish, it's called Konstners Um Let's say, uh, Kunstenaars uh, Loon. Um, and Per, if you, if you are still with us, um, I wanted to ask you to present a little bit what 
the artist's salary is exactly it it sounds a little bit like a basic income for artists but i don't know if you would describe it yourself that way too yes uh, uh, i i uh, that that's a good description mm -hmm. uh, sorry i lost the uh, connection uh, but uh, i tried to to uh, explain what kind of organization i work for mm -hmm. i'm the director of this uh, the people's movement for art promotion Mm -hmm. And uh, we have been running since the 40s, so it's a post-war organization. And uh, as many of those in Sweden, it's about democracy and, and uh, like uh, education for everyone. Um, but uh, the people's movement is also uh, older than that. It's uh, uh, the kind of self-organized NGOs that started when people <clears throat> learned how to read uh, they started to interpret the bible by themselves and built them like free churches and that's the model that has spread in sweden so it's a lot of uh, movements everyone could have their own movements and when i am um, uh, for like in art schools for art students i try to explain this kind of it's it's a gang of activists that organize themselves but uh, in this sense they have like uh, um capability to rethink society and that is also how we see this art art as a way of uh, discovering the world of course but also to rethink the society and uh, um, the main problem with like for an idea like basic income is that it rethinks society and a lot of people they can't think like that it's impossible for them so um we think that um, artists is a, they are, we are uh, like a test, uh, a good test group for basic income. And uh, one of the problems that we solve being an artist is that we are used to not uh, uh, link like labor and income. We do labor, but we don't have the income. Uh, for it, uh, we have income from other. Uh, so that's uh, say the basic problem with basic income is that uh, people's mindset they can't cope with that. Is uh, um, so we we are are there that we have like scholarships and stuff like that that uh, support us. Um, that and we are also used to. to um, to have like income for something that is not our profession. Like uh, we do art, uh, but the income is separate. It's the same thing. So in our organization, of course it's uh, founded by the grassroots movement and the people's movement and all that. But we also, we have like a, a saying in a lot of things that the governmental thinking about art they use the art, uh, um, they have, a, they have a, um, every issue in Sweden has like a governmental report about it. And uh, uh, in this uh, case, we have this uh, uh, governmental report about artists uh, that you, you have referred to that in the, in the text, you have the link uh, you mm -hmm. can follow. But, uh, it's really good to have those reports because it's like state of the art in every decade and every issue you can find like a huge lot of writing about the problems, what you see for it. And, and mm. but, but when it comes to solutions, uh, those governmental reports have become weaker. Mm. And that is uh, because <laughs> the author uh, or the investigators of those reports, they can't propose anything longer that costs money they can't like they have to 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 make uh, it into so it's they don't have like um, the strength enough to rethink society in that way they can point at the problem but the solutions is a lot weaker than that so uh, in when we answer to that kind of report uh, we have the chance to answer we often point but good uh, reading of the problems but 
really not the solutions for that. And um, um, in this case, we say that th this report points out the, the, the biggest problem for artists is that they have this financial stress. They don't know how to, to, to survive as artists. Mm -hmm. And what we do is taking the idea of basic income and put this into, this will solve the problem. And in, in Sweden, it's, it's a minor group that is professional artists. So it's an easy uh, economical uh, experiment to do that. But uh, the artist union in Sweden, they are against this because we fight for uh, that artists should be paid for the work. And your proposal is saying that basic income should be the solution. So it's, it's, it's not in there. So even for artists, it could be problematic to rethink society in this way. But we say that this is, uh, we are the perfect testing group. Artist is to do this kind of, of um, uh, tryouts, you can mm. say. And, and for an artist, is uh, technically, it's a, it's a scholarship, but not for like top down. It's like a broad scholarship that basic income should get you to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when it comes to basic income, you have like many um, yeah, different options in a way. There's also the, the, the biggest fear is that uh, you give every artist like a basic income but at the same time you reduce uh, the whole security system um, and that in the end you end up with like too little money uh, to uh, pay uh, i don't know the hospital when when you get uh, ill for many weeks for instance or um, how how do you relate this idea of a basic income to the the existing social security is it um replacing it or uh, or do you see it in a different way yeah it, that's the weird thing because sweden is uh, kind of world famous for its social security mm -hmm. and uh, um, but in this case basic income will uh, improve the the this situation for artists because as an artist or like a free agent you don't have the social security system. It's an old system that uh, uh, only count when you're employed somewhere. So the mm -hmm. security system doesn't work for artists. Yeah. Uh, and that's a big problem. Uh, so you can see this is a part, a big part of the social security system. When people have like basic income, you can see it everywhere. Uh, they work better, they sleep better, the, the, the function of the society works better. Mm -hmm. And the, the artist group, when you see uh, everyone getting a, a, in a stress uh, for finance reasons or, or something like that, you become more stupid, make worse decisions, and, and your career can go anywhere that you don't meant it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, the stress puts you there. So this is part of the social security system. Mm -hmm. You can say that. And where does the money come from to pay these, these basic yeah. incomes? Every, and especially this governmental report, points the good things with art. That this is values that you can't find anywhere. Mm -hmm. So this is also the, the finance market. They know that this is the gold. This is really the gold, but they can't really find the gold and they don't know how to capitalize it. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, artists, uh, they don't want to be capitalized. This is not in their interest to do that. But if this report, if the governmental perspective is that art is good for society, it uh, improves the society, it uh, creates wealth, it's, it's, uh, it's good for us. This is a really small cost to pay for that. Mm. So it's just the logic following this governmental report arguing about uh, all the values with art artists. But also, you can say if we should have the experiment that we share the works, everyone have to work like part time, half time, uh, mm. uh, 
um, maybe people should be like healthier. The society should work better. You shouldn't have any, any unemployed people. So it's also about social security to rethink society. How come that we have accepted this neoliberal way perspective that, that this is a game? We, we must have it like, like a competition. Otherwise, we can't solve problems. Mm. Uh, we have proved the opposite. This is like a, a setting that we can change. And that is like uh, use the artistic thinking to rethink society. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, uh, set for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I guess we will talk more about like also the, the benefits and, and maybe also the, the dangers or the difficulties um, later. I would like to um, present our second guest, which is uh, Anna Rispoli. She's uh, a Brussels-based artist um, and she's involved in uh, the Common Wallet. Um, it's an initiative of... Um, yeah, I say 10, but maybe they, you are more um, artists and cultural workers that uh, made uh, in 2018 the radical decision to put all their money on one bank account and pay uh, everything and get everything uh, on the same uh, bank account. And Anna is also in uh, some of her work uh, also busy with questions as uh, value and values and uh, but we we are mostly interested for now by um, the common wallet um, it, it feels like very radical but maybe it is not uh, Anna um, how, how did you uh, decide on one day to put all your money together on one account um, uh, what, you're right, we are still 10, even if uh, one person left and one person came in, so there is a micro-mobility within the group. We are 10 art workers, uh, now all based in Brussels, before there was one uh, based uh, in Holland. Um, uh, we didn't decide one day after the other, but um, at the beginning we wanted to do a cooperative. We wanted to create a cooperative of production and distribution of our work. Mm -hmm. And we thought that within this cooperative we would have been able to mutualize a lot of costs. And so, um, yeah, basically sharing a lot uh, of what were the, the fixed costs of uh, many things. And we know that sometimes... Uh, you know, private costs and uh, costs that are related to work sometimes overlap in the life of an artist. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we thought uh, maybe we should train before opening this cooperative, which is a quite bureaucratic uh, um, step to do. Um, and by training to train, we should uh, try to share for three months our personal uh, accounts. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was the beginning. We just wanted to do a, a little training into, into radical sharing. And um, so we went to the bank, we opened an account, and uh, we gave uh, full, uh, complete, and transparent access to all the members. Mm -hmm. That means that everything is completely uh, transparent, um, but everything is completely anarchic, in a sense that there is no accountancy whatsoever. What we, we ask is, uh, what we agreed, we didn't ask, I mean, we agreed among us to, um, to wire all the monthly income. That means uh, salary, that means uh, unemployment, that means uh, um, little state money for the kids. Uh, everything gets piled, um, so it gets wired from our personal accounts that still exist because of... Uh, uh, tax uh, um, mm. check uh, we wire everything on one account and then from there we pay everything so every single cost that uh, we have to pay for our private life from the rents but also from the from the crazy high heels shoes that uh, one decide one day to buy from the from food so from basic to uh, completely optional stuff mm. And, and do you discuss it? No, that's the thing. Everybody has the right to, to, to take whatever he feels it's important in the moment. And, 
and there is no discussion. The only discussion is uh, about the holiday, <laughs> fine enough. So to, to be able to, to save enough money to be able to mutualize the possibility to go to holiday. Mm -hmm. the, the, the need was uh, to, to, to criticize and to challenge a bit the, the fact that the social system exists in Belgium and is a really luxury thing from a point of view of uh, a Mediterranean um, person. Mm -hmm. but still is quite inaccessible for many. So there is a certain, um, mm, yeah, there is a, a lot of asymmetries between uh, young artists, for instance, who cannot access to a, to a, to a status that would give them a, a bit more security, um, to many different uh, non-formatted artists that are some, for one reason or the other do not enter in the specific and quite strict categories that have been designed. And we know that there is a politics of uh, cleaning out, in a way, the banks of uh, those who can profit from it. So the, the idea was to challenge it, not with, um, in this case, with a systemic or bureaucratic approach, but rather with a really bottom-up initiative 10 people bringing together, putting everything together and deciding to share without counting. And what are the, what are the, ben the benefits of it? So what, what did it learn or? <laughs> the benefits is that, uh, um, well, there are very practical benefits. Some of us could, could study and they, they wouldn't have been able to study before. So they stopped the work, they, the job they were doing and then started a new career and uh, went to, could take one or, one or year or two of research. Um, it's two years and a half huh, that we are going on. Mm -hmm. uh, some other people could start to accumulate the right to, to ask uh, to enter in the system of uh, um, social uh, unemployment. Um, but especially we, we discover that it's, I mean, that it's a first prototype to challenge this idea of production we have. So the fact that um, we are supposed to uh, take care of the damage we do to ourselves, to the environment uh, with a, a, a overexcited production. So we are all on the verge of burnout. Uh, while, in fact, it would have been interesting to reverse this logic, we should uh, produce in order to give to the care uh, the possibility of uh, organizing our life and, uh, and our politics. And that's what I think we, we are learning in these last months of, uh, of, uh, of crisis. I mean, this, um, this centrality of the care, which is possible to, to apply in... Uh, uh, of course, in more institutional and also in a, in a small initiative. Mm -hmm. um, we call ourselves um, um, a prototype to have uh, to create a, a polyamorous relationship with money. <laughs> what that means? That means that in a way, the, the triangulation of work, um, money, and care. It's uh, Mm, it gives access to a multiplicity of solutions. So mm. it's not only a binary relationship, which how much you work, how much you gain, and how much you can consume then, but then to re, uh, reshuffle everything and re make it spin. And to, uh, and to learn that in fact, uh, there is a, of course an economy of effect that is much more interesting sometimes mm -hmm. than, the, than the fact that you need these or that to lead. So basically what we learn is that, uh, I mean, it sounds a bit naive, but it's really like this. I have the feeling that we are much richer now than before. Mm. Okay, that, that sounds as a, an interesting uh, benefit to me. Um, uh, our third speaker is uh, Yannick Ganseman. He's a visual artist uh, in Belgium. He's also a member of NECC, which is uh, a social and artistic organization founded by uh, professional visual artists and yeah or also to um, do advo advocacy uh, for their rights um, to politics um, he, he's speaking here is in his uh, in his own name um, and um, yeah, Nick, you, you have been uh, reflecting on um, something that you call a fair status. Um, it's uh, 
I don't know if I can say next to um, the statuses, the, the two main statuses that we know in Belgium are like the employee uh, status with a fixed contract and the uh, self-employed uh, status. Um, why is there a need uh, to you to have an, another or, or an, an alternative to what is existing now? Well, we don't really need an alternative like in an extra uh, 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 artist status because I think what we actually need is a fair status for people who have low variable incomes uh, and that, key, that can be workers in a company, that can be starting architects, uh, that can be actors, writers, dancers. Um, and the status we have in Belgium just don't work for a lot of contemporary artists and the simple reason is is that uh, politicians made it very difficult to acquire uh, artist status in Belgium actually impossible and also we wouldn't be discussing all these possibilities if we didn't have budget cut after budget cut in uh, the arts in, uh, in uh, Flanders and what uh, the difficulty is about being an artist in Flanders today is that you want to earn money and you want to also do it in um, in a correct way with bills and with the social protection and that's nearly impossible also because you are pretty easily or obliged to pay quite a lot of taxes in comparison with the income that you have the median income of an artist uh, in Flanders today is 12,000 euros and the median cost uh, today is 17,000 euros. So you are about 5,000 in the min mm -hmm. uh, in uh, any status. Um, so that's why a more fair way in which any income that you make uh, will be taxed in a, uh, in a correct way. Uh, and I want to uh, tell a, a little anecdote. The very first work I sold was to uh, a very cliche collector guy, kind of guy, uh, a guy with uh, expensive cars and all those things. And I didn't know what to do. Did, did I need uh, an official bill? Did he want to pay it just in hand? How do you do it? So I went to Kulturlokit, which is the official art advisor here in Flanders and they said do you have a job and I was unemployed at that point said yeah what you should do every artist here they have a part-time job which I didn't really like which because it meant that you are obliged to have another job uh, besides your artist practices uh, second he told me the story of the artists in London we which he represented also that there you can have um, an income on the side of 20,000 uh, pounds, which is not taxed. And it's not taxed because um, they um, made the sum that it's too expensive to tax it because if you have to pay all, all the people to check it, if, it's, uh, if they paid it right uh, to file everything, it's more expensive than to just don't tax people with low variable incomes. Mm. The thing is, of course, the critique will be that's a very neoliberal view. But I just think if for the very uh, the people that are very low paid, it's actually a fair view because uh, that's what they can earn. And you, you just can't take more away than the little things that they earn. And I think uh, we should try to do something like that in the arts. And also a an, uh, um, different status for artists also doesn't recognize the fact that there are a lot of uh, flex workers, uh, people from Deliveroo, Uber, Katoen, Nazi, and so on, who also do, don't earn very much uh, and also have troubles um, getting uh, the ends meet. So I yeah. think uh, that's what, uh, what I want to take into account also. Yeah. So to summarize, it's um, all income that, that you get under, let's say, 20,000 euro, uh, you don't pay any tax uh, on it. And it's not only for artists, it's also for other people that have low incomes. Um, 
It's a, it's a suggestion, of course. Uh, the, in 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 reality, in in my role as for the NECC and the Artist Coalition, I would be more pragmatic and <laughs> work with the the working artist status that exists, but don't work very well at this point. Mm -hmm. No, which is especially the case for visual artists, um, because for a performance artists, it's easier to to get it. Um, but that's different for a visual artist. Um, let's switch to our last uh, speaker, which is uh, Avi Swinnen. She's involved in TimeLab, which is an uh, organization, artistic organization in Ghent. Um, yeah, uh, they do a lot of things, um, but I would say that they are like organizing the transition from an artistic uh, viewpoint and uh, you Avi you are uh, have been thinking about an kind of art currency uh, in Dutch it's called the Kunstenmunt um, it's based on an existing currency uh, in K Kenya uh, which is the Bangla Pesa um, how how does it work this uh, or how would you dream uh, that it works this uh, art currency yeah first of all um uh, i think in my ideal dream world we didn't we don't need money so that's a very important um, perspective to start from um because money or monetary systems they do uh alienate um and so i was very skeptical about currencies and community currencies in, uh, in particular uh, up until the point that I met uh, Will uh, Ruddick in Kenya with his Bangla Pesa and I started to understand how our monetary system is working our regular monetary system and how maybe we can hack the system to in our benefit uh, to create um, uh, a common uh, capital let's say um, and um, how it works is, um, it's very complicated to explain in a technical way, but actually what it means is that you have like a regular monetary system with an other currency, but there is a counter value, which is an important element. There are currencies that don't have a counter value. It's just a, a validation system, let's say. This is really, um, you buy, the, you buy the, the coins, let's say, uh, but you, you um, lose, 50% of its value by buying it and that's an agreement when you start when you enter the cooperative structure which is the bank the collective bank so there already goes 50% of the value into the collective capital and then you start exchanging and what we know from currencies uh, all over the world is these community currencies they produce a, a three times more um, uh, transactions than than the regular currency why is that? Because a market system uh, is um, very um, uh, restricted. So what you can buy and what's valuable is, de is defined by the market. And in these systems, we start to validate other things like, for example, care, social production, it's called actually, it's more interesting, I think, as a term than, than care, um, to um, um, value um, a specific labor, but it's, it's there's a nice um, example I heard not so long ago from uh, Michael Hart. He said um, this social production is actually, um, for example, a nurse that is taking care of your last uh, phase in life. And she's not only taking care of you as a person in this phase, which is very uh, intense, but also the, the whole community around. So that's the kind of labor we're talking about mm -hmm. it's not an exchange of i need something and you do this for me it's something more um uh, sustainable and uh and um more um less uh easy to to grasp um as labor um so um uh, so the system itself, so first of all, uh, you, you agree that 50% goes up and then there is a regular economical system that is happening. So when you, for example, um, um, you hold the, the money, uh, it means that you, you start to collect um, and you start to save. That's actually what, what the capitalist system is trying uh, to you to do to make sure that you have taxes on the holding, which is called the holding tax. So we, they use the same system, but instead of deciding what is the amount of taxes and the tax and the, 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 uh, 
the surplus goes to um, uh, the bank and his uh, shareholders, this becomes collective money. And you can decide as a group what is the percentage of the tax. So there are a lot of these kind of uh, known uh, um, um, systems built in, um, uh, structures built in, but they are used in a different way to create comments. Um, and that I found really interesting because it, it really it relates also to um, a thing that I, I read not so long ago from um, Ron Eklash. He is a researcher on uh, decolonization, which is interesting because um, what he says is um, we need to set a system of economical um, production as a parasite to the system that is already there. And that is really interesting because I can see that in open source, for example, the open source hardware developments where you create a new economic, ec economics that is based on uh, un, uh, um, uh, uh, alienized uh, labor. And I think that's really the thing that we see also with arts. You, don't, you have affinity with your labor. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're using a lot of products and, and, and services that are in the system uh, and you cannot really detach from that. So what Ron Iglas is, uh, is, is, is claiming is, yeah, yeah, maybe we should set up a system to parasite with this, new, this more um, meaningful labor on the, 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 the existing system, but with the goal to create these commons. And for me, the Bangla Pasha is a bit what is happening there. We agree that, this, that, that, that we, we cannot just collapse the capitalist system, but we can set up an alternative with a more um, value-driven goal uh, in order to create a shared capital. And then the next step is how can we organize as a community to decide on how to de redistribute that capital. And therefore we need organizational models that are different. And also maybe I, we don't have to think in, a, in, like in this big, huge overall global system that maybe small system with, with their own identity and how to connect these. And maybe that's a far more sustainable uh, ecosystem than try to, try to find the solution. And that's interesting what I just heard from the three uh, examples of the arts uh, practices. Yeah, they're all very different. And maybe that's really interesting to also accept that um, mm. with the dangers and the benefits. And maybe we should start thinking about how to connect these into a larger ecosystem uh, with respect to the choices that are being made in the local um, uh, group or community. And could you give like one concrete example of, of how it could, could be working in, in the arts? Uh, because it's a com complementary uh, currency. I mean, there are the normal money is still existing in a way. And I also understood that it's temporary that, that like, uh, by the end of the year, the value is gone if you didn't use it or exchange it or... Uh... Yeah. In the, in the original version that the, the, on paper that, uh, in Kenya, it was a yearly uh, general assembly where you sell the leftover coins to your mm -hmm. own collective bank. And that is the celebration and also the moment of decision making what to do with the 50% uh, capital has been created. Yeah. The new system they use blockchain and it's not like this yearly thing. So you can also use technology to 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 make it more fluid or more hybrid. Um, um, and another very important element I learned from from uh, Will is that it is a small community. So it is in in the first paper version, it's 150 uh, people in one community, the max. And now the digital uh, version has 450 max which means when there are more than 150, it doesn't stop. It's not that, that you are excluded, but they start a new system. And then they uh, organize an exchange rate in between the two currencies. And that is a decentralized uh, idea, what I, which I think is really interesting to, to, to try to implement because of, because of the complexity of the arts, global arts scene, let's say. Um, and that you maybe can also use different points uh, depending on the practice uh, location and um, moment in life. Um, mm -hmm. An example, um, because also uh, one thing I was, I was, I just um, thought about when Anna was talking. Um,
What I understood is that it's mostly fine, that, that you could use it for these um, small services that artists do to each other that is not paid now. Like, for instance, uh, I don't know, one makes a performance and another one is coming to give feedback in a way. It's like now it's just a, a service between friends. Um, but there you could like use the art currency to uh, to to exchange value let's say or maybe you see different uh yeah i remember will and that's why i thought about what anna was saying because will um said at some point it's just it's a it's a second currency and uh, of course you still have the Kenyan the, the kenyan shilling for savings and that's why i was wondering uh in the in the commons wallet uh how do you deal with the needs for people to save uh, on a, an individual. And I know that is a very typical and very challenging idea that uh, money comes with ownership and debts and saving. And uh, that's the first thing that we have to tackle in, in these exercises. But at the same time, how do you deal with that? Yeah, we are learned to feel safe with savings. And yeah, that was a question I had with the common walls. How do you deal with people in a specific moment in life that they want to, yeah, they have this dream of saving. Um, and, and, and that's, that, that's why this is very radical because you don't have that second um, saving money. And that's what the Bangla Pesa or the Kunstermann could be. It's more um, the transaction but at the same time, we remember when we were in Austin uh, last year discussing with artists about the art coin or uh, the art currency, and I, and then someone said, "Yeah, but at the same time, I just want to do this as a as a thing that I do amongst friends, and I don't want to be paid." And you, and this is very difficult to to validate what what is the what is the meaning of that exchange, and maybe it even is a bit perverse to to do that. So. Yeah, there is there are still some loose ends, I think, in the whole system already. Anna, maybe you want to react or yeah, I think that both uh, both uh, questions are really to touch really important and delicate points. Um, about savings, uh, um, savings not only comes with a culture, so there is a culture of savings. We, we need to, to, to build up uh, a sort of a personal individual pillow because we live in an individual, individualistic uh, and egoistic society. Um, but it also comes with emotions. I mean, savings, uh, uh, I don't know how many artists really manage to save a lot and regularly. Um, savings very often come with heritage, for instance, or with uh, past families. Uh, so there is a sort of, uh, that we are not going to judge now, a sort of um, stuff that comes from uh, previous generations. And, uh, and savings very often is projected to, to children. To, I'm going to save for my children so they can go to university. I'm going to save to buy a house so that they can live comfortably, we can live, etc. So there is this um, stretch of time that is a very emotional thing. And that's what we are, uh, we are exactly in this space now. So now we still have uh, personal savings that were those who have it. Huh? And we have very asymmetric positions within the common wallet. Somebody uh, owns uh, an apartment, others mm, don't, other are in the process of buying it, other will never buy it probably. Uh, some have children, some do not, some have uh, sick parents, uh, which is also a reason for saving, mm. um, somebody not, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and so the, 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 the 10 different positions towards what saving means are quite asymmetric. So we have started a process of uh, um, self-reflection and trying to go through the emotional level of uh, uh, commonizing the, our savings. What does it mean? Do we also uh, do the bureaucratic uh, step to uh, suddenly own together the different apartments? Uh, 
mm. which would mean also become a real bureaucratic uh, structure. At the moment, the common wallet is an association de fait, so there is just a, a little paper handwritten somewhere, and that's it. Uh, we can dissolve as, as soon as we want tomorrow, um, and it's only based on this radical trust. Mm. Um, we are not... Uh, uh, the second thing that you mentioned, um, think of the accountancy, the, the affecting of accountancy of uh, the, 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 the fluid exchange between the artists. I find it also very, very important because the, the, it's important to find a good balance in which not everything is under accountancy, of course. I mean, we still want to um, work on a, on a double on a double speed on one side reclaiming what are our rights to be paid correctly but at the same time also reclaiming a totally utopian way of living in which we do things for free and in fact our job is to deconstruct the need of a job that would be the utopian uh, perspective so the abolition of work and the abolition of the system of production as we know it mm. at the moment too long maybe i leave the word to someone else <laughs> yeah maybe i i want to um uh i see one link between uh yannick's proposal and pair's uh, uh idea of of uh, of the basic income and that's um the the trade unions probably are against it uh or they have like uh um yeah critique I guess on both uh, proposals. It was one question that was asked already in the beginning of uh, this talk um, to pair. Uh, why are unions against basic income for artists uh, in Sweden? And do do you see it as a valid uh, critique that that they have pair, or do you have the impression that we should go beyond it, or that that we have different times now, or what? Um, um, fair. Um, no, I just think they have struggled so long um, for this, and then you, when you don't fit into their struggle, that you go with a idea that goes against it, yeah. uh, they just uh, like a reflex, just bash it down. But if you rethink this and uh, it's also about what kind of context uh, is this triangle. Uh, um, and and um, if you want to change society, uh, then you might be positive to this test. But yeah. if, you, if you want to fit into the society, um, then it's, it's a threat. So, mm -hmm. so I think like a union, um, you must also in, in Sweden, the state, uh, they proposed the artists to, 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 to form a union in the 30s. So it's, it's really the Swedish system. You, you must have like a, a, a labor force and a employment force and they agree. So this is the, also the Swedish context. Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, <clears throat> I think a lot of, of uh, social experiments successful ones has been like uh, erased just because they they go against the common sense uh, mm -hmm. and the common sense is really uh, a powerful <laughs> structure mm -hmm. that you 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 um, yeah, i think artists might be the best way to 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 handle that to mm -hmm. rethink systems but in this rethinking, is, is it is it do we need to rethink even the the real basic of um, the link between uh, work and income, which is now like almost the fundamental of of the whole system? Um, what 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 do we what do we have to change? Do you think in in this uh, in this link? I think that then we go to the like the neighbor field, like politics and uh, in the political struggle. Uh, you can have like a really splendid idea and it could be like bashed down like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's not uh, yeah, looking at Trump or something like that, but 
uh, is not the best idea that win. So you have to be smart in this uh, game also. Uh, mm. But in the art field, then you can be much cleaner. It's just ideas. Uh, mm. They're not so threatful. Um, and uh, we are like a half political organization, half art, artistic uh, one. So, so we are in between, you can say. Mm. But one one big question, um, yeah, Yannick, uh, just uh, react what, on it. What, what you shouldn't forget for a lot of artists, uh, and certainly contemporary and visual artists, it's also important that you can give your work or sell your work to someone else in that sense that, that you connect in a sort of relation with the buyer and it doesn't mean that you have to get a lot of money, but it's important in the life that the work will get, it will, it will um, be placed somewhere in somebody else's house. And the fact that he, he, want, he or she wants to pay for it means uh, something. Uh, and in that sense, I also think a lot of artists are actually sort of solitary workers. And for them, it's very important to get a sort of payment for their work, even if it doesn't uh, immediately line up with uh, the correct income that they want or the correct hours that they put into the work. Uh, I think it's also uh, uh, an important value for them. And by that, I don't mean a monetary value. Mm. Because we were talking about artistic recognition, I think that's a sort of recognition for a lot of artists. Mm. But it's, it also sounds what you are saying now as, as a kind of argument against the idea of a, of a basic income. I think a basic income can be a good uh, um, surplus or extra to, to land on if things go bad. <laughs> but I think it's important because I also heard Per talking about shared works. I think a lot of artists would be like, I don't want to share works. <laughs> uh, and I think a mix of almost the four ideas we hear tonight would probably work perfect for a lot of artists that you actually can switch from one to another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one discussion is also, I think, um, do we think of alternatives just for the, the artistic situation, which is a quite, quite specific, uh, situation um, or do we want to expand it to um, to other uh, people in society in a way if if we just think it for artists maybe it, it just stresses this this I yeah this cliche that exists already about artists as something something special something that ha has to be special that um, Okay. Uh, how, how do how do we see this relationship? There's if we think about alternatives, maybe we should think broader than just the artistic field. Uh, maybe Evie first, and then Pear. Or? Yeah, I I think um, it's not that it's only for artists. I think that what artists are doing is trying to understand the relationship we have with money, uh, and by doing and by examples uh, such as the, the common wallet, I think we, we are trying to understand that how that monetary system is based on like this engineered scarcity. So there is only that amount of money, there is only that amount of resources, and then, then the war for the resources starts. Um, and there must be a way, it feels like we don't really understand what is what is underneath of how we can change that. And I think we can only do that through that artistic practice. Um, and that is just uh, a practice or a process to understand how we can change. So I don't think it's the example or the solution or exclusively for artists. I think it's just an extreme high need we have to, to change that system. And there is this group of artists that can um, yeah, show us maybe alternatives mm -hmm. and as radical as their own lives are at stake. Mm -hmm. And that is a very powerful thing. Yeah, and you pair because the, the artists uh, income that over the basic income for artists that, that you defend, okay, the name, does it say itself like it's for artists? One question that was also asked uh, on, on Facebook is, yeah, how do you, 
um, how do you define who's an artist, which is always um, a difficult question when you yeah, limit it to a certain group. Uh, but maybe you don't want to limit it. If I, that's, um, that's my question. Yeah, um, I, I told you about our organization that we see like uh, everyone is an artist. Like mm. art for everyone is the, is the motto we work for. So uh, um, uh, the artist is just like every citizen, but you extend the rights for the citizen. When you're an artist, you take this role really seriously. So you test what the citizen can do with society to affect society. And uh, that you see is like an activist. So if you, you uh, um, accept the system, this is the system. We want to get paid for this. We want to be part of the system. We feel outside the system. You can also see this weakness uh, like a possibility, like a strength to rethink society. Uh, what is this, my position? What is this, uh, um, the positive uh, way of seeing this problem? And I think that uh, a lot of artists, they are as different as any, uh, any person. Uh, but a lot of this uh, artistic training is to rethink, to solve problems, to think about, because we are not part of the system. This p system is a fake one. Uh, it's very few artists that can live for their work. So this is really uh, revealing of this fake, if you say so. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I don't think we should pretend anymore because you see the whole society is falling apart and we have already been there for decades, not being part of this system. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think you should be honest to say that this payment is not uh, as much work as I, I put in. I do this for another reason. And in our organization, we started in the 40s after the war. There was like an ideal in society that should you, you should do your unpaid work in, for democracy, for the new society. You should have like something to work for. Yeah. It's artistic work as well. Yeah. Like it's unpaid. So in this research project that you, uh, with, with the... Uh, the basic income idea and all that with, that you you refer to in the text mm. i i also discovered like unpaid work like maintenance work cleaning uh low value uh, uh, but a lot of heavy work in society and i think that the pandemic period this spring has shown us uh, that this is uh we have the wrong perspective on labor and what is valuable in society. And artist is a really good position, as you said uh, before, to, to, uh, to distinguish this and to do the research about system and society. Mm -hmm. uh, Anna, how, how is it uh, for you or like the group in, in the For me, there is no doubt. We definitely, I mean, the perspective is definitely a universal basic income. So uh, something that is not specific to the arts, but it is on the contrary, is really uh, aiming at uh, creating alliances with uh, other precarity. And uh, the idea is really to uh, uh, not to depotentiate the specificity of art, not at all, but I'm really fascinated at uh, this uh, provocation. Uh, uh, everybody's an artist. I really mm. like this uh, uh, concept uh, and how much this reverts uh, the idea of uh, um, empowerment, uh, potential empowerment of citizens. So yes, universal basic income as a sort of a more structural perspective that could be indeed and needs also to be uh, retailored made by bottom-up initiatives that are small and that are multiple and that are probably combinable and that um, also that are fun. That's important. But a, a big question is, is always when we are talking about these alternatives, like how, how do we get there in a way? I mean, the common wallet is very concrete. You decided it yourself 
to do so and 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 it's working you and you feel more rich but um i think for other some other alternatives yeah you you really need some power you also need the state to um to support uh, this id um and we are talking about alliances but in practice i don't have the feeling that that we have these alliances already on on these alternatives let's say do, do we do we have to take steps there or or how can we bring it's always the bummer question at, at the end how can we bring this uh dreams alternatives in in practice for more people than 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 just ourselves or our uh, sector uh, um of course i have step one two three mm. <laughs> step one is <laughs> i'm joking of course it's not an easy question but uh, um i think that uh, we have to open and uh, really get to work in that sense and that's why our work should be paid because that's the real work we have to do mm -hmm. to uh to create uh, the not only the the landscape i think that the, the landscape and the parterre is there and this, this urgency is there this notions is there this like uh, uh, perception of uh, uh, a filled cup not only about privilege not only about uh, economy but about i mean we have we are seeing it in these days um uh, personally i'm trying to 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 have the same discussion that we are having tonight uh, for instance in italy there is a uh, the forum for contemporary I italian art that suddenly has been monopolized by exactly this discussion so income how can artists push for a universal basic income that's we are trying to to write a manifesto about that and of course a manifesto just is a manifesto but it's a manifesto that is in in touch and is trying to do a really a big pressure on the in that case italian government um you know italy is also much more precarized by the crisis uh, and i think that exactly what is happening now should happen on a viral level and um and from there, uh, get in touch with uh, all what is happening on the level of uh, of the Santé. I mean, the La Santé in Lut is also thinking about commonizing uh, resources, mutualizing uh, strategies. There are a uh, dozen of initiatives. The thing is just let's take the, let's be brave and connect them. Let's convergence the Lut now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to take too much time, of course, to to give all the examples, but I think it's uh, that's the the work of, of also state of the arts it could be a, a great catalyzer of these uh, dozens of initiatives, and uh, probably um, I think now as the legitimacy uh, to uh, to. Uh, um, to get a bit more ambitious and not only think about Belgian uh, situation of Flemish. Uh, um, cuts but uh, to think of a, a more structural um, proposal that uh, that for instance talks on a European level Yannick mm. um, do, do you have the impression that there is a momentum now um, that today maybe it's easier to overcome some um, yeah, counter powers than than in earlier times, and and what are these counter powers? Um, well, well uh, what are these counter powers? Are a lot of uh, uh, politician or political parties who still think or thought that uh, artists didn't work much uh, or had quite easy lives, and it's actually the opposite. We have very difficult social statuses and um have to try to make do with little money or if you get some money with uh, difficult situations to get something done and i think the corona crisis has uh, shown that uh, the, pre the precarity in which each of those artists work uh, and i think that really was an eye-opener for a lot of um, a lot of the general public but also a lot of the people in power who thought they knew how it how it goes <laughs> and i think uh now is the time to do something about it um, and i hope it will work but i'm not so sure because for example today the complete uh 
uh, Flemish majority of the Flemish government voted against temporary access for unemployment for artists. Although everybody knows now that uh, only one or two percent of all Flemish artists uh, earn enough uh, to get a decent income for a year. Mm -hmm. So I think now is the time. I think everybody knows it, but uh, it's difficult to say how it will go. Mm -hmm. There's an, um, a question on Facebook that maybe I want to ask to you all as, as the final. Um, what do you all perceive as, as the biggest threat in, in this moment of transition? And I would add, is, <laughs> and what could be an interesting uh, uh, solution is a big word, but, but an interesting way to um, yeah, block this, uh, this threat. Um, it's like a, a huge question here <laughs> to end with, but... Um, I'm just a moderator, so I'm like, uh, I can ask it. Um, um, Yannick, to start? Yeah, well, to answer that question, I think we really should go outside of the teams we're discussing here. But if you want to block the biggest threat, then it's very simple. Don't go back to uh, where we were. Uh, do something about climate change. Do something about uh, equal care, fair practice, uh, diversity. Um, everybody was saying now, oh, uh, healthcare workers are important, are important, uh, teachers are important, we should fund them more, we should fund artists more because they are in a precarious situation. Well, do all that and do something about climate change because this will be far worse than what we've seen now, I think. <laughs> That's the very simple question. Don't go back to what we were doing. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, Evie, maybe, or? Yeah. Um, my first uh, uh, idea is stop polarizing, um, and stop criticizing and self-sabotaging. And I, I really believe in the movements and the, the power of movements and, and especially the political voicing and uh, another way of uh, experiencing uh, democracy. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say um, we have to trust that movement also and stop criticizing the excesses that we all see in these things. And I, um, yeah, and, uh, yeah, recognize the unarticulated. I think there are a lot of things going on that we don't really recognize right now. Um, mm -hmm. That could, as Anna said, just maybe just be connected. That would be a a huge thing to do and 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 um yeah mm -hmm. um, my next step let's say <laughs> and when you say the movement which movement do you exactly talk about it, i think movements are extremely important when we uh, when, to, when we want to change a political climate and uh, especially movements for example now what we see with black Lives matters i i think i follow these movements for some time and the nice thing about it is that there is no like leader and I think that is also something that we have to recognize as a strength. And uh, it seems maybe very unorganized, but at the same time, it's extremely powerful because of that. Um, and I, I also think about the, the, the things that the State of the Arts are doing. Um, um, but I maybe that can be, maybe we have to trust that and be more radical on that and accept, also accept, for example, free riders, because we always have the idea of all the people that will, um, get advantage out of, you know, like for example, basic income and all that. In in in, in open source, we we always say like this is ten percent will always do the do the free riding. Accept that mm -hmm. as part of the system, as part of the the, the op opposition. You need to understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same thing with movements. Uh, and we don't need to follow that one leader to have a good movement. And 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 sometimes maybe from within we try to. We are sabotaging that with our critique. Mm -hmm. We should stop doing that. Yeah. Uh, per, um, what do you see as the the biggest threat for the transition that is needed? And can we do something about it? Um, yes, uh, uh, I, I think like um, 
the critical thinking is like the core that connects uh, artist, student, researcher, uh, citizen. And uh, um, I think the struggle from the 30s and 40s uh, against like totalitarian thinking, uh, then Nazist, communist, is come like again that this is really um, the activist movement or the movement to critical thinking for everyone. Uh, it's also create hope. Um, and I think that's really um, important that people shouldn't feel powerless. Uh, it's important to create, to do th stuff. Uh, even though we, we see this, it looks really dark. Um, but um, it's also important to, to engage people and to let people engage in society and to, to make a change. Uh, but then also like this, what we, we must uh, hold is like the democratic system, um, the right to be critical. Um, so, so also to have like this uh, um, acceptance to like people movements that fails in one part, it could be okay in, anyway. Like uh, it could be uh, perfectly, if you see beyond that uh, and not the, the, the weak detail, but the bigger question in every uh, issue, like what is the biggest question? Um, now I think that uh, we are really good in details <laughs> or Trump is good in details uh, that is fake news or whatever, but uh, um, um, or like always get back to the big question. How do we save this? How do we live a good life? How could we be like to the constitution? Uh, what, what can I do for, for you other guys or, or society? I think that's uh, important uh, to, to uh, not see what's in it for me uh, because that is uh, <laughs> getting us down. Uh, what can I do for society is like uh, the better question. Mm. Uh, Anna, yeah, well, <laughs> what, what can we do for society? No, you, uh, um, do you have a last? Um... But to, yeah, maybe just to put it in uh, other terms to uh, connect uh, the trans feminist uh, and the colonial cause with uh, the ecological cause. So, open the ears, open the antennas and start to, to, to act in a different way in order to change the means of production. We don't need to produce in this way, we don't need to consume in this way. And so also the way that we can enjoy um, the, 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 voilà, the, what, what we produce is totally different. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a completely different way of uh, imagining uh, what are the needs of distribu redistribution or re-socializing uh, what we have when, we, uh, when our consumption, and uh, I don't mean only consumption of energy, but really consumption of uh, uh, affection also, consumption of human relations, consumption of animal relations, consumption of uh, environment, consumption of time, all this uh, um, bulimic approach to consumption, I think uh, in a trans-feminist approach can easily be deconstructed. And uh, once we, we do first steps on individual level, then on groups level, and then on societal level, and this is not an order, but comes all together, um, I think we, we open the possibility of a real change um, that is a change that is not, uh, let's say, that is a change that is hopefully coming before the collapse. Mm. But that change will arrive anyway. But you, you defend that, you, that we should start by ourselves, let's say, and that, that we start with a practice individual. No, 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 it's not an order of things. It's mm. not the first we start with ourselves. I think we, I personally start with a, with a, uh, with a, uh, a group uh, that I can, uh, from which I can see the borders in order to have a bit of satisfaction of the prototype. But at the same time, I act on a, on a more global level and a more political level, because mm. I think that this is the perspective. 
um, but the, the dimensions are always interconnected. The small, the big, the medium, it's, we live in an interconnected uh, way and we produce in an interconnected way and we need to change in an interconnected way. Mm -hmm. So, no, let's start with the, with the perspective of universal basic income and at the same time we change the way that we talk with our partner. Same stuff. Oh. I think for me that was um, maybe the um, most interesting insight of, of this talk is that um, when you present four alter alternatives you uh, or we are like framing to think like one will be the best or better than the other um, but uh, the insight is I think that uh, what has been defended by different of you that, that we need a combination of, of those uh, alternatives um, that we should talk and always see the the biggest questions in, instead of the details um, that maybe the biggest discussion is not on what is income but also should be on what is an artist or who are artists um, and that um, okay. we believe uh, that there is a momentum uh, today and that uh, movements and even free riders um, will be involved in it um, yeah again uh, this tuesday talk is uh, way too short to uh, get uh, into the deep of all these uh, questions but uh, we were um, yet again i think able to share some thoughts to hopefully spread some new uh, insights uh, to everyone who was listening um, next week uh, we will talk about the local um, as is yeah, redefined a little bit by uh, the lockdown and the corona crisis um, is art, which is like very international. Uh, yeah, do we have to rethink about our uh, connection to the local community as artists, but also as citizens as we see that, um, uh, yeah, people are uh, voting parties um, that are more into uh, not sharing uh, at least uh, and what should we do about it that's uh, the topic of uh, next week uh, eight o'clock again on uh, your favorite uh, facebook page uh, thanks a lot for uh, this talk tonight um, Evi, Yannick, Anna, and Per, um, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.